Hello and welcome to creating a loopable animation in Blender. It's gonna be fun. In the first part, we're gonna be focusing on animating the object in a proper way and also transferring the well animation data to a material so we can also animate the materials based on our actual movements, right? In part two, we'll focus on creating particle systems in a geometry nodes and simulation zones. So it's going to be a lot of fun. If you like this video, please leave a like, a comment or subscribe. We would love any one of those. Right. So let's get started and select our cube. Delete, shift A and mesh. And let's just add a UV sphere and shake that smooth right from the start. Now to animate this bouncing, we need to at least have some space to bounce. So I'm going to move this GZ away from the origin somewhere there. Hit Shift M, Mesh, or Shift A, sorry, Plane. Scale that up. There we go. And then we can start the animation. So select your sphere. And by default, I'll usually be in my layout scene for anything I do pretty much. It gives you a timeline right away. If you don't have that like this, just make sure you drag from the bottom left up and set this to be your timeline. There you go. Timeline is important for animation because it shows the frames and the keyframes that you're gonna be adding as well. So to add a keyframe, select your object and press I, right? And right away, that's gonna add your keyframes. And in older versions, I think you have to press I and then we'll pop up with a little window of what keyframes you wanna set for location, rotation, or scale. You can also do it by let me clear this for a quick. You can press that by hovering over it and pressing I. There you go. You only add it for location. Beautiful. Now, this is a new keyframe at frame one. And you can see that right there is like a little diamond appearing. All right, beautiful. And I want this animation to loop for 60 frames. That's going to be my animation timeline, right? This is the end 60 frames. The start is one. So if I want the same frames to appear at frame 60, right? Remember our looping animation. The most important part is that your first and final frame look exactly the same. Anything in between, you can pretty much do whatever you want, right? As long as the transition is quite smooth and the end and the um, start frame are the same, it works very well. So to do that, you can select your keyframes, Control C and Control V while you are at the end frame. And there you go. Now in the middle, I want this ball to bounce, right? So I'm going to press G and Z and move that to right about the bouncing point, right? The origin of the world. And then we can press I by hovering over that once again. I'm not sure why I got an error there, probably some modifier or some, um, some add I have enabled. There we go. And now if we actually play this, you can see we get a moving ball. Now by default, Blender sh um, smoothens out the animation and I'll show you what that looks like. Let's drag this window to the left like that and set this to be our graph editor. Now this is our animation. This is the Z position of our sphere. It goes down and back up and it's very smooth right from the start. Now I don't really want this bottom part to be smooth, right? Because it's the point where the ball should have the most speed right? Because gravity works like that, right? The lowest point has the, the highest velocity. And once it goes back up, it will have that same velocity minus some friction, of course. Um, and I can just do that by scaling. I can set, um, select all these points there, the handles, and press S and zero, right? And right away, you can see that's more of a bouncing animation. Right, this is more of a bouncing path, beautiful. Now, obviously, when we want this to loop, we're not gonna lose friction when we are going up, right? It's not going to lose air friction, and um, no density of the air is gonna slow this down, and um, because we want it to end exactly at the same height, right? That's why we do that. Now, I want this to be a little bit more of a speedy movement, right? More of like a gravity effect, which means that it has to start off a little bit slower, and then move faster at the bouncing point. Now to do that, we need to select these two handles and just scale them down, right? So you can see that we're getting more of a V shape. And this is already looking more like a bounce, beautiful, right? So that is actually quite easy. Let me save this real quick. There we go. Now we got our bouncing animation. 
and it's looping as well. So let's just set up our camera, for example, right here. I'm going to, I'm going to press Control Alt and Numpad zero. I'm going to select my camera and I'm going to set my X location to zero. My Y is fine, my Z is fine. Then I'm going to set my rotation to zero there, zero there, and this one, let's do 90 and move this down a little bit like that. Then in my output properties, I'm going to change the resolution. I'm going to swap the X and Y to get a vertical um, resolution that we could, for example, use for, I don't know, a fun little satisfying video for YouTube shorts or TikTok, you name it. So 1080. 1920. Beautiful. Now let's just move our camera so the ball is fully in frame. There we go. Rotate it a little bit. Amazing. Right, so this is going to be our animation frame. Now, there's something that I want to do. Just to show how we can relate textures, for example, to movements of our objects, right? To animate these as well. So let's go to the shader editor. And I'm going to set my uh, shader to be... Well, let's just set this to be rendered, right? And we're in EV, totally okay. Now, in my world properties, I am just going to, um, well, let's just set the strength to be a little bit higher for now. And let's just move this light a little bit so we have some front lighting on our little ball. There we go. All right, and now if we play this, it's just a bouncing white ball. But I want this color to change based on how close it is to the floor basically right so when it bounces it has a different color when it goes back up it transitions back to its original color so let's create a new material there beautiful and let's add shift a a mix color all right because i want two colors that i want to control i'm going to set this to be very light let's do a bluish color and a purple color there we go right something like that and we want to switch between these, right? If we connect this, it's just going to be the, the, well, the middle of these two colors. But I want this to go from blue to purple, blue, purple, depending on the bounce. So how do we do that? Well, what we can do, if I play this animation, you can see that our Z value actually changes. All right? Um, and we can use this value as a driver for the color quite easily. All we need is to press Shift A and find a map range node. And all a map range node does is it changes the input values, right? Let's say if our minimum height is 0 0.99 and our max is 5.8, then we can set this to be from that initial value to 5.8. And the output is going to be between 0 and 1. And that's what we need for the factor because that is between 0 and 1 as well. Right, so we can basically swap out a range for a new desired range. Beautiful. So I'm going to set the exact values I have here. Right, so this is our minimum value. I can just copy that and paste that in my min value. This one. Remove the meters part though, because it won't work. Then for the max value, right, end frame or start frame, we can copy this and add that in here as well. Beautiful. And then from... 0 to 1 is fine. Now we need to give an input value, which is a link to the current location of the sphere. So right now is that, and we can actually copy this as a full, sorry, as a driver, as a new driver, and we can paste that into the value, right mouse, and paste the driver. So this value is now going to be the exact same as the location, which means that if we now connect this output to the vector, and we play this, you can see a transition from pink to blue. Isn't that already beautiful? Now I'm going to do the same with the background, but inverted, because I think that will look quite fun. So what I'm going to do is select my floor, press tab, select my back edge, E, Z. There we go. And then I'm going to select this back edge, control B, and just bevel that and scroll up a few times for some more loop cuts. Escape and shade smooth. There we go. Right, and I'm going to set the same material, so we can just set, um, select our plane, hold shift, select our sphere, control L, link materials. Now the colors are going to be the exact same, but I want them to be inverted, right? So how do we do that? Well, we first have to create a new material, right? Because otherwise we're going to change both the sphere and the background material. So first make a new one, we can just name this floor, 
And we can just swap this out, right? So I'm just going to duplicate this. And I'm going to set this with the little eyedropper to be the purple one. And this with the eyedropper to be the blue. There we go. So now if we play this, it's going to be inverted. Isn't that beautiful? So now we got a nice little startup of our animation. Amazing. All right. Thank you so much for watching part one. In the next one, we're actually going to add the particles. And it's going to be done in geometry nodes and simulation zones, right? So don't be nervous about that, right? We're going through it. It's going to be very simple. <laughs> so stay tuned. Cheers.